It's that time of the year again and Intel is launching a brand new generation of processors and this is the 13th generation. What we have today is the Intel Core i9-13900K, the current top of the line processor. And before we proceed with anything, this is an engineering sample and that is why the IHS looks a bit different. We're going to separate this video into a few segments and everything is timestamped down below so you can skip to whichever part that you want to watch the most. So, let's begin. So what we're going to do here is to compare the new Intel Core i9-13900K with last year's Intel Core i9-12900K and also with the recently announced Ryzen 9 7950X, that's a lot of 9s. And that chip was only announced one month ago, by the way. And this is all the hardware that we've used to do all of these tests. So you can see on the screen here, alongside with the motherboard that we have used as well. The first thing that we want to highlight is the power consumption and also the thermals of the Intel Core i9-13900K. It's rare for us to talk about it so early, but that is because this chip is really hot. On stock, it easily draw upwards of 260 watts on load and that means you will need a very good CPU cooler to keep the temperature under control. We were using the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux which as the name suggests, an AIO cooler with a 360mm radiator and uh, <laughs> it didn't manage to sustain the performance over time and once we clicked start in the CPU rendering benchmarks, it instantly got all the way up to 100 degrees celsius and thermal throttling happened right away. What we had to do then is to set the PL1 limit to 130 watts and the PL2 limit to 170 watts and that helped in some ways but it still hits 100 degrees celsius on heavy load and that affects benchmarks in both positive and negative ways so we'll talk about this later as well. And just out of curiosity, we also tested the Core i9-13900K stock and also limited all its power to 170 watts to see how much performance that it will lose and that number of 170 watts is not arbitrary because if we look at the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X's spec sheets it states there that the default TDP is 170 watts as well okay time for the benchmarks then We'll start off with the game benchmarks and there's really nothing much that we can say here so we'll just speed run through it. There are a few key takeaway points if you're planning to get the Core i9-13900K for gaming. Number one, the performance difference between the three processors and even setting the Core i9-13900K to 170 watts power limit will not affect your performance much. More like you're just gonna be within margin of error, that's it. And number two, with that said, you might want to lock the power limit to 170 watts because for a few titles we have tested, the temperature did go up to 90 degrees Celsius and some reaching 100 degrees Celsius on CPU bound situations like 1080p gaming. And I doubt anyone buying this chip will play games at 1080p anyway, so might as well you spend that money on something else, right? Number three, as the resolution goes up, we can see that the performance did indeed get impacted, especially on a few titles, and that is to be expected. When you go all the way to 4K though, it becomes GPU bound and performance is pretty much the same across all chips. And the reason why someone would get an Intel Core i9-13900K is because of tasks that relies heavily on the CPU like rendering, compression, and decompression, and all of those things. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting because we'll have to dive deeper into each test and see what's happening. What we'll focus more on is the performance difference between stock and the power limited 170 watts test. Obviously, the performance is going to be lower when the power is limited, but by how much? In summary, it kind of depends on what software you're using. So for 7Z, it doesn't really impact that much because we can see that for the compression and compression tests, yeah, it's just a little bit lower when it's power limited. As for Blender, it shows a much bigger performance hit. Same goes to V-Ray, Corona Renderer benchmarks. And if we look at Cinebench R23, we can also see a huge performance gap between multi-core performance, but when it comes to single-core, it's not that big of a gap. 
But when we jump into 3D Mark, Firestrike and Time Spy, the Core i9-13900K will achieve about the same score. Same goes to UL Procyon Video Editing Benchmark. However, there is a noticeable gap for Photo Editing Benchmark. We also tried some arithmetic benchmarks used by HW Opport as well, for example, W Prime. And the performance is noticeably better when we lock it down to 170 watts, and that is mostly due to thermal throttling. And then for Super Pi though, there isn't any significant difference. And yeah, even if you limit it to 170 watts, it's gonna perform the same. And if we revisit some of the graphs that we've seen earlier, the Core i9-13900K manages to outperform the Ryzen 9 7950X with a noticeable benchmark score difference, except for a few benchmarks like W Prime and UL Procyon photo editing test. However, if we want to compare what to what, and this is what AMD calls the default TDP of 170 watts on the Ryzen 9 7950X and the power limited Core i9-13900K at 170 watts, it quote-unquote looks as though AMD is indeed more efficient, right? But that is not the case because the Ryzen 9 7950X still draws upwards of 240 watts during intense load. And I gotta say, at least AMD caps it off at 95 degrees Celsius maximum instead of 100 degrees maximum on the Intel ones. But what about overclocking then? First of all, our CPU cooler cannot handle it already and Mr. Doogie tried it out. Uh, so no, no overclocking. But instead, we're gonna overclock the memory. And though this is an engineering sample, ES for short, it still runs DDR5 7000 MHz easily, and that is using the existing Hynix MDI memory kits. Much easier than 12th Gen 2, by the way, as highlighted by Mr. Doogie. And we can also lock it down back to 6000 MHz and optimize the subtimings, which is easier to do as well compared to 12th Gen. So that's the end, but we have to summarize what we have said today. The Intel Core i9-13900K is a fast chip, no denier. However, looking at the temperature, this is going to be very difficult to cool. And then we also have to look at the power consumption. And it seems like Intel is indeed brute forcing the performance by just pumping in more power compared to 12th gen. And granted, that might have been something to do with it being an engineering sample, so we'll leave it at that. We have already pre-ordered a retail unit of the 13900K and we will return and talk about that when we get our hands on that chip. So if you're shopping for a brand new PC this holiday season, then should you go AMD or Intel? That is where we need to talk about the cost of entry because I think that is one debate that needs a bit more focus on because remember, PC is a whole package. You need to get all of the hardware that is compatible with each other to make it work. And if you're planning to get Team Blue, then you will have the choice of getting a motherboard that supports DDR4 or DDR5 RAM. And that in turn will also affect your RAM choices and ultimately the cost that you need to pay upfront for your new PC. AMD's latest Ryzen 7000 series will be quite damaging to your wallet because you see now they are changing to LGA, you will need an entirely new motherboard and also the new motherboard only works in DDR5. And yeah, let's not forget that AMD chip is also more expensive because if you look at the Ryzen 7, no, Ryzen 9 7950X, it's 699 US dollars. This Core i9 13900K is only 589 US dollars. With that huge price gap of 110 US dollars, you can spend that money, get a better motherboard, or treat yourself to a few meals of fish and chips. I like fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I think overall, Core i9 13900K, I would say it's a surprisingly good chip, even though if you compare it with 12th gen, it doesn't really offer much, but improvement is there. It's just that AMD, kind of in a difficult position now. <laughs>